This is part 20 of Bootstrap tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the three form layouts provided by Bootstrap. Here, we have a login form. At the moment, we haven't applied any of the Bootstrap styles to this form. Here is the HTML required for this form. Notice we've got two div elements. Within each div element, we've got a label and a text box control. This text box is for the username and this text box is for the password. We also have the submit button. At the moment, this form is not looking very pretty. Let's see how to make this pretty using Bootstrap. Bootstrap provides three form layouts. Vertical form layout is the default one. It also provides inline form layout and horizontal form layout. First, let's discuss the vertical form layout. Here is what we want to do. We want to create a vertical form that looks like this. In the vertical form, the labels and their associated form controls are stacked on top of each other. Notice on this form, we have the label username stacked on top of username text box. Similarly, the label password is stacked on top of password text box. We also have the login button. There are two simple changes that we have to do to this HTML to create a vertical form layout. The first change is on these two div elements that wrap the label control and their associated input control. On these div elements, I am going to use form group class. Let's do the same thing for the other div element that we have here. The second change is on the form controls themselves. So on these input elements, I am going to use form control class. Let's do the same thing for the password input element. Let's save our changes and when we reload the page, we get the vertical form. Notice the labels are stacked on top of their associated form controls. At the moment, this button is not looking very pretty. It's using the browser defaults. Let's apply bootstrap button classes. So on this button, I'm going to apply btn and btn default classes. Now we should have the button styles applied as well. At the moment, we are not displaying these placeholders. Notice within the username text box, we have login username as the placeholder. Similarly, the password text box has login password as the placeholder. To get those placeholders, I'm going to use the placeholder attribute. So the placeholder for login username text box is going to be login username. Let's do the same thing for the password text box. So for this, it's going to be login password. Let's save our changes. And when we reload the page, we get the placeholders as well. At the moment, these form controls are spanning across the entire width of the parent element. There are several ways to limit the width of these form controls. One way is to use the predefined bootstrap grid classes. So at the moment, we are using call access 12 class. So all these form controls are going to span across the entire 12 available logical units. Let's restrict the width to three logical units within the 12 available logical units by using call LG3 class. Now, when we reload this page, notice the width of these form controls are restricted as expected. Next, let's discuss creating an inline form layout. In an inline form layout, the form controls are placed side by side next to each other, as you can see here. To create an inline form layout, there's one simple change that we have to do to this HTML, and that is using form inline class on this form element. So when we save our changes and when we reload this page, we should get an inline form, but we are not. That's because for an inline form, the viewport should be at least 768 pixels wide. But here, we are viewing this form on a large screen device. So obviously, the viewport should be definitely greater than 768 pixels. But why are we not getting an inline form? That's because in this case, we are restricting the viewport of this form by using call LG3 class. Instead, if we use call LG12, the viewport is going to be definitely greater than 768 pixels. So when we reload this page, notice we get an inline form where all the form controls are placed side by side next to each other. But as I start to resize the browser window, look at what happens when the width falls below 768 pixels. Look at that, the form reverts to its default layout, which is the vertical layout. But then the moment it crosses that 768 pixels barrier, it reverts to the inline form layout. 
Finally, let's discuss creating a horizontal form layout. In a horizontal form layout, the label controls are on the left and their associated form controls are on the right in a single line, as you can see here. There are a few changes that we have to do to this HTML to create a horizontal form layout. First, I'm going to delete this div element and its closing tag. Instead of using form inline class, let's use form horizontal class. And then on all these label elements, we're going to use a different class and that is control label. Let's do the same thing with this label as well. Finally, we're going to use the bootstrap predefined grid classes to lay out these form controls. We want this label control to be two units wide in the available 12 logical units. So I'm going to use call SM2 class. Let's do the same thing with this label as well. Since the label is two units wide, we want this text box to be 10 units wide. And to achieve that, I'm going to place the text box inside a div element. And on the div element, we are going to use the bootstrap grid class. So let's use call SM10. So the label is two units wide. The text box is 10 units wide. Let's do the same thing with this text box as well. So let's use a div element. And on this also, we are going to use call SM10 class. At this point, let's save our changes. And when we reload this page, notice the labels and their associated form controls are aligned properly, but this button is still on the left. We want this to be just below the password button. So I'm going to wrap this button inside a div element. And on the div element, let's use the form group control, just like how we have used form group with the other elements that we have. And we are going to use another div element and move the button inside this div element. And on this development, we are going to use the bootstrap grid classes. So we want this button to be 10 units wide, but we want to push it two units to the right. So I'm going to use call SM offset two. So it's going to push two columns to the right. With those changes, when we reload this page, notice now we get a horizontal form layout. Now, we will see the horizontal form layout you know, on a large screen, on a medium screen, on a small screen. But as soon as we fall into an extra small screen size, like a mobile device, look at what's happening. It's reverting to the default layout, which is the vertical form layout. If you want this horizontal form layout, even on an extra small screen size, like a mobile phone, you know, use call excess classes instead of call SM classes. So that's the horizontal form layout. Thank you for listening and have a great day.